What is up, down, and sideways, you lovely individuals? Eric and Mark here for League Unlock. It is day one. We're finally here. Swiss stage, the main stage action from Worlds. Eight games on the docket. And Mark, I'll be honest, right out of the get-go, it does not disappoint because we have the LCS matching up against T1. And not only are they not getting stomped, but they're looking damn good for 30 minutes. Holy cow, early game bonanza in the favor of the LCS. The T1 killers in Piosik and Core JJ getting some of that action started out for the North American squad. Things are looking good. They've got a Baron. Oh, wait. Now we don't got a Baron. It's as quickly gone as that for the LCS. But they get a second one. The second one does come back around. Can the LCS hold it? Can they get the Miracle Team fights? Is the answer but th th listen this is the it's a classic lcs uh, on the better side of things performance because they have this baron they all die but they bounce back they end up getting another baron and you think man they are working so hard p 6 having the game of his life catching out faker and everybody constantly it feels like everything's coming along and there's one team fight you're not on the same page as you want Oh no, it ends as simple as that, which let's quickly shout out to that, you know, one of the most amazing plays we see on the day is that clean getting on to, onto Faker as he's teleporting in. Get that kick on the Oriana. Dunzo, you're feeling this is it! Team Liquid, you're on the path! Until you get that team fight, and yes, until you get a team fight where Guma is dip dancing, dodging, ducking all over the place to get that Ash out of any type of trouble and keep pumping out that damage, keep dishing out the DPS, take over the team fight to take control of the game and T1 crush the NA hopes that had been building up with such a strong and, and relatively lucky at some points early game for Team Liquid. And that's, that's just the difficult part of matching up against these world-class teams for LCS squads is there's basically no room for error. You have one team fight where the engage is there, but the whole team's not on the same page. No one's able to kill Guma with a, a hundred CS lead almost he had at one point uh, on this Ash where he's able to take the game over. But kudos to Team Liquid. I think much more competitive, better performance than anyone was thinking heading into that match. The other, the top seed for the LEC, G2 D+. This was one of the most hyped up uh, matches with good reason and listen 20 minutes you're thinking oh my god g2 is going to semi-finals they are looking dominant they're looking clean surely the top seeded team from the west won't just flip a baron right they would never <laughs> oh no 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 that's where we're wrong because yes get that burger ready for yourself boys because we're flipping them barons that's exactly how it goes and uh, Yikes did fantastic in this game as a rookie, especially considering all the things and everything against in that in the opponent category. When you're talking about Canyon, loses out on the smite in this Baron flip. Uh, and they all bunch up in the corner so that Canyon and crew can wombo them. It's also pretty bad. <laughs> Not the best strategy there, but there is a bounce back. They do have that resilience G2 and they do manage to get together and piece together the team fights that are necessary. And it all kind of starts with that individual play though. We're going to Mr. Claps in the mid lane. Caps showing up big time on that Oriana pick that is developed into one of the premier options in the mid lane right now at the tournament. He's getting a solo kill in a 1v4 scenario. Obviously this early game, Han Sama was snowballing early and often on that pocket pick Draven. The biggest gap in this game is 100% Mickey to Kellen because Kellen, oh Lord, some of these flash engagers on Alistair, I, I, I feel like he just wants his boy Bible to start some games. And th that, that could be the only logical conclusion to come away from that one is that yes, Bible looking like he's inbound any day now with the way that this performance went for Kellen. Uh, you know, you, certainly some of the plays you can think about and try to get into the theory and say, okay, he's trying to make this angle happen or this play, blah, blah, blah. A couple of them, it really is like watching solo queue and kind of question mark pinging a guy like, uh, hello, what are you thinking there, man? Wasn't good, gave the advantages, gave that control over to G2 and then props to the G2 players on the execution, really did handle this. 
it's it's a difficult picture to look at with this one because I think if you're going strictly off of where they're seated and what you would expect, you might have liked it to be a little bit cleaner, maybe a little bit more dominant, whatever. But if you do realize that, okay, well, whoever the LCK and LPL are sending as a fourth seed isn't quite really fourth seed and where things have been for number one seeds, regardless of NA and the LEC, having G2 deliver like this, step up in this type of rivalry that has developed between these two was great to see and is that right first step for them at the tournament. And I mean, aside from that Baron throw, if that doesn't happen, they were on their way to a dominant win. Still impressed that they were able to bounce back from that throw, but looking like it was going to be clean. So still feeling good about G2. Right after Team Liquid's valiant effort against T1, we got another NA team playing well. Pretty calm, cool, non-chaotic win for Cloud9 against Mad Lions. It is rare on the international stage. We see a slow-paced, fully in control start to finish performance out of the LCS. Yeah, almost never do we see this out of the LCS, but man, I am so happy that this one played out the way it did for Cloud9. This was the one that we issued that challenge. We said, hey, Cloud9, you're gonna prove that you're serious at this event. It all starts with making sure that you prove that not only, hey, we got that win against Cloud9, we got that win against Europe, all those type of, you know, rivalry bragging type of things, but getting that victory and in the fashion, the control that C9 was able to show is very much of, okay, there's a gap between us and the Mad Lions and where they're situated in the group and what I think the expectations are right out of the get-go in day one, getting that controlling victory, looking at Blabber in the jungle doing a fantastic job. And the other rough one to, to look at from the Mad Lions perspective is certainly Berserker making a mega difference between him and Cars. Yeah, as soon as he gets that one kill on the Ezreal, Berserker just gets completely out of control, ends up getting, it's like five straight kills or something for Cloud9. But yeah, seeing Blabber on a carry champion is always a treat. And a bit of a level up from Fudge, who's the guy all year that we've been talking about underperforming on the C9 squad. Yeah, and it, it's a really important thing, especially kind of seeing the landscape of the tournament and especially through this day one on what some of these performances are, what the champions are, all these type of things and getting that feel for it. Where Fudge fits in, where that performance fits in, you know that this is absolutely a little bit better than I think what our expectations were heading to this event. And if Cloud9 is going to be serious, is going to do damage against these teams that are into this type of category, into this type of territory in the event, yes, you better believe Fudge leveling up and playing like this is key. Fresh off of the incredible run from the playing stage, BDS, JDG, the matchup topside, it's an orn for 369 and the coveted Garen out of Adam that has been terrorizing everybody except JDG doesn't care doesn't even with it getting first blood getting so much attention early there was now there was some whoopsie plays from Adam you know standing on a control ward and then just walking in and <laughs> dying so that's less JDG and more an Adam problem yeah, but I think we, I, I got to give credits over to BDS because even with that, you know, incredible underdog type of situation, I still think that they performed a little bit better, a little bit more so than people even myself had expectations for them, given what type of Titan JDG is to take down. And I think we eventually 15 minutes into this game really saw that start to turn online. And it all starts with Ruler on the best pick at the tournament. Kai saw right now dominating in that bottom lane, not necessarily coming out with any crazy advantages, but was necessary, you know, was a little bit ahead. And if he's a little bit ahead, he's a lot ahead is the way things are going to be coming out and where you're going to see him dip and dance and through these team fights. He does it in the LPL all the time. A fed Garen and not even really all that fed, but a little bit fed trying to get through was not going to stop him one little bit. Yeah. And I think it was Chronicler on the cast saying multiple times. Games don't even start with JDG until there's a 5v5 team fight because that's when they're going to turn the game on its head and even, I mean, they weren't really at a deficit. Let's call it an almost sort of even game. Five minutes later, JDG is knocking down the Nexus, you know? Yeah, and it's tough. And I think that this was really 
kind of a wake up call, hopefully to some people that are still doubters about JDG or maybe, you know, aren't, aren't paying attention to the LPL and kind of, ah, yeah, I'll see it at Worlds and then I'll question it and blah, 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 all those type of things. This is your answer to JDG when you see this type of stuff that we had already been seeing be impressive, work out throughout the play in stage. JDG says, oh, that was, that was a pretty good start. Uh, let's show us what, you know, let me show you what a real team can do here at Worlds and absolutely Ruler and the crew night on that Ari laying down some of that beat down power. Momentum from plants not quite enough for BDS to be taken down JDG. Then we unfortunately, you know, first two games for the LCS. Things are looking good. Let's carry that momentum. It's the top seed NRG Summer Champions taking part in the biggest stomp of the day. Partially because of the comp that they picked after a first pick poppy for Weibo. When on earth do you ever pick Callista into that? Oh my lord, I could smell it all the way across the ocean. Whoever was cooking up that NRG draft, get him out of the kitchen because that ain't the ticket to success. Holy moly, you said it right. You see this draft play out, all the bands, everything looking you know, relatively normal. You see the poppy come through. You're like, oh boy, there it is. And you draft a bunch of champions that want to dash, want to go in, all these type of movement things. And Poppy just says, no, it was unbelievable to see them take it. And one after another. And yes, that Callista included. And it caused problems for NRG as early as pretty much level one, level two. Things went sideways. I mean, that bot lane, the Callista became completely useless. Unless you're getting insanely fed, this is useless a lot of the time, but FBI ended up doing sub 5k damage and there's nothing he could do against this comp. And truthfully, this was such a one-sided stomp. You change a few drafts, I don't think this game changes. This was just a gap across the top of the board from the Shy, getting like a 20 CS lead early on Rumble to Zhao who's styling on everybody on his team. Yeah, that's that's the other thing. There were so many whoopsies, so many eyesores for the LCS fans that it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly which one was the critical one, which one is the tipping point, because it just tipped over right away type of thing in this matchup. Xiaohu was fantastic as you laid out, um, you know, looking in the top side, our boy, the Giga Chad, Mr. The Shy up there controlling the waves, controlling that farm and controlling the game is the way things went. For Weibo Gaming, very good performance out of the LPL seed. And I think this is one of those ones. Unfortunately, if you're an LCS fan, I got nothing better to offer for you. But just quickly do a memory wipe type of thing. Reset, try to refocus for the remainder of the Swiss stage. I know you've heard that before, and it's not really the best pill to swallow. Yeah, I mean, Xiaohu, as soon as he's getting a solo kill on Palafox, he's either smirking at the idea of him calling this guy a genius or... <laughs> Again, 200 IQ move to get in the head. Mental warfare side of Weibo for sure. <laughs> yeah, this ain't Shadow's first rodeo, my man. He knows what is prepared. This was that effort that I think a lot of people, a lot of the Weibo supporters, Weibo Copium, Hopium fans have been saying this team can unlock. And so seeing it right out of the gates here, getting that first victory accomplished for them, good signs for the Weibo fans. Going from the most one-sided match of the day to what was the closest for the majority of it. And we knew KT, BLG, probably going to be at a similar power level coming into this event. Things were looking real good early for KT. Cuz on this Zach pick popping off early. But unfortunately, Elk on Zaya in these team fights. How many times Cuz goes in to engage, he just presses the ulti. They were tried so hard to kill Elk in all these fights and they never could. It never happened. Uh, this duo, Zaya and Rakan, obviously for, for different reasons with both these champions, I think we have seen throughout play-ins in this early day one of the Swiss stage, are some of the most elusive champions ever. It's almost impossible to get these two. And just when you say, oh man, Rakan, yeah, he's got all those things. Of course, he's hard. But we'll get. We'll, we'll make sure we'll get a Zaya. That's not, uh, not as hard. Just get a player like Elk who can push the limits, knows how to spread the feathers, when to recall them, just at the right time to get those roots to get out of there, knows when to use that ultimate on the right timing, cool down, all that type of stuff was fantastic from him. I think that that was a big difference maker. Probably, I think right now, other than someone like Ruler, who's just so phenomenal and fantastic, 
I'd say Elk is the best Zaya that we've got at this tournament right now, and he showed it in this game. The other factor is, of course, that top side, and it always is when you're talking about BLG because we had a Giga Bin appear in this facility, and he was making sure that it was a beatdown onto Keen's Atra. Yeah, he might be the best Cassante at the tournament, and there's a lot of people who play Cassante pretty well, but uh, Keen on Aatrox felt like he was just not on the same page with the rest of KT the entire game. How many times was he alone in the back line, 1v4, just getting wombo comboed, unable to ever really get anything done? Yeah, and I think that this is one of those swings where you look at this game and you kind of fi figure, okay, maybe, you know, this, maybe that type of thing, a little tweak around, and maybe it's close enough that it swings things around. You got a different type of picture as that game develops and KT is able to come away with it. So I don't think that this is necessarily one of these defeats where you're like, ah, man, it's all over for KT at this type of point. They're certainly going to have their work cut out for them dropping down into this situation. But yes, you look at the side of BLG and man did Ben answer on that Cassante making sure that he was always there to take away anything that Keen was trying to get accomplished or set up for the side of KT Rolster. Yeah, and again, across the board, a level up from BLG from what we saw two months ago in the summer playoffs. Uh, but feeling good about them going forward, not so much about their next matchup as we'll get to a little later. But uh, it wasn't just the LCS getting stomped in some of these matches because... Tarzan and Scout woke up today and they chose violence. And unfortunately, it was Fnatic who were the victims of that violence. Scout absolutely showing why he was the MVP of the LPL and Tarzan showing why he is at times one of the most hyped up junglers in the world. Oh no, Seth. They, they must have heard some of the bulletin board material. They must have heard the Fnatic fans going, oh, you know, just another LPL seat, man. We We've taken on RNG all these times. No problem. No sweats. Oh, uh, yeah, some sweats, my man. You're sweating bullets, my man, when this is going on. And fantastic play from LNG. And as you laid out, Scout and Kanavi, big time. Uh, Looking at what Tarzan was able to do in this series. Really think that this is going to be an LNG that is going to turn around a lot of people that kind of are going, okay, I can respect the JDG. I can respect, you know, what you're talking about, a top LPL. LNG is going to make a lot of people realize that what happens in the LPL is a scary place. And, you know, this is Oscar Innan was starting for Fnatic, as we know he didn't the last couple of playoff series with Wonder Emergency subbing in. And I mean, LNG, I think they're the third highest odds on favorites to win the entire event after obviously JDG and Gen G, but still haven't felt like they've been getting the respect that they are due. But I mean, Gala didn't have to do a ton this game because Scout and Tarzan were just dominating every part of the map. This team is terrifying and a legit threat to win the whole thing. And that's the most terrifying thing about all of it because watching LNG, watching this LNG evolve, into this type of category, this caliber of team over the course of summer, and especially over the course of Gala, really integrating himself with this roster, really coming online and showing us the Gala that has built up the name in the LPL. We see that at this tournament, combined with the levels that Scout and Tarzan dished out today, you absolutely got a tournament top contender. The least eventful game of the day, I'm going to say. Gen G versus Gam, because... I mean, there wasn't much there. I, Gam tried. Genji was fully in control after like 10 minutes. It kind of just, especially Chobi, but it's like a 6-0-12 performance on Ari. My man looked like he was just going through the motions and looked borderline bored in this game. Oh my goodness. This is like, you know, we, we asked for spice from the Marines. We needed something cooked up to change the game, change the playing field against Gen G. We asked for the spice. We get met with like, ketchup or something over here, man. This was not it. What we wanted cooked up. Nothing really crazy coming through from Gam. And yes, full control coming through from the side of Gen G. Just difference all across the board. I think Chovy was fantastic in this one. Pays getting the job done as well in that bottom lane and that's with peanut you know wandering aimlessly a couple times getting caught <laughs> yeah. out and missing some vi cues but even it didn't matter there was a 10k gold lead eventually for genji so business as usual for uh the top seed from the lck they're looking like they're waiting for the tournament to start and well i got news for you the tournament starts now because <laughs> immediately we go into this uh draw for day two action that's how the swiss stage is gonna work and this thing 
looked absolutely rigged from the get-go because it is civil wars across the board. If you are T1 and BLG, you're looking at this day two going, I thought we were at Worlds. Now I'm just playing the team that always beats us at home. Oh, baby. Day two of the Swiss stage. And yes, sir, it is the civil war bonanza because a lot of these matchups, almost all of them, are going to be those Civil War type matchups between inter-region play. Let's, let's get going. I can't wait for these ones. And yes, these are big time matchups that we're going to get. T1, Gen G, BLG, JDG. This is fantastic stuff. And I know people are upset. All these, you know, domestic matchups that we're getting, that's so lame. But as you watch the tournament progress, this is only going to make the next rounds even better and better to get these interregional matchups going early before you're fully eliminating everybody. Because even when you're 0-2, you're not out of the event. And look on the positive side, LCS and LEC. NRG Team Liquid, one of them's guaranteed a win. Uh, Mad Lions BDS, someone's guaranteed a win. There's obviously going to be favorites in those matchups, but you should be looking further ahead in the tournament. This is only going to make the matchups even better. Yeah, I think it is one of those ones where it's that knee-jerk reaction, right? You see it and you're just like, oh, well, all of a sudden, and then not so happy. And then you realize, oh, the way that this then plays out the next day, no matter, you know, either way, these matches flip-flop type of way, you are guaranteed days three and four to shape up, to have some of the most dramatic type of matchups and possibilities that we've got set up for us. I think instantly, right away, I know we've already been hyping it up and all this you know, promotion for it. I am a big fan of how things are going to go in this Swiss stage. And I think even just the action that we had today and what it's going to set up for us this week is already proof of it. The real loss is whoever has to play at zero and two either uh, KT or D plus who are going to be joining them because you'd think the teams would be getting easier down there, but that is just a real tough drop for both of those LCK seeds to have to play each other down there. And obviously the top side of things only going to get crazier. I love this randomness that we're getting from day to day. You don't know what these matchups are going to be. You get a draw every time day two feels like it's going to be even more hype than day one. We're both excited here, but that's it today. For League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the flippity flip.